The border between the Netherlands and Belgium runs right across a nature reserve called Het Zwin. Today it's a popular spot for tourists and local people, but it also has an interesting history. Here you got the old Zwin, and a Zwin was the entrance of the harbour of Bruges. And in, in, the, uh, in the 1300s, this uh, entrance to the sea was completely filled with sand. So there's, at first the harbour of Brugge lost its importance because there was no more a harbour. And they had to go to Damme, which is a little city closer to the sea. And when Damme was finished, the only port that was left was Sluis here in Holland. But the Zwin uh, has, has been always there. And, and, and nowadays, in the middle of the Zwin, there is the border between Holland and Belgium, on the coast. With my, with my parents, when I was a little boy, I came already to this area. And we have been camping here for many years. And then we came back when, uh, when I was uh, married and we had children of our own, because this is a nice region for, for, for children. And now our children have their own children, and now we are coming back with our grandchildren. So we like this, this area very much. At 68 kilometers, the Belgian coast has the world's longest tramway, and it connects Kanoka, close to the Dutch border, with Depana, near the French border. It has, uh, between the Pana and the uh, Knokke, it has 68 stops where people can step on or off the tram. The coastal tram rides about 3 million kilometers a year and also transports about 30 million passengers per year. And in fact, only in July and August, uh, the coastal tram already uh, transports about 4 million passengers. You can just sit back, enjoy the view. Um, there's no traffic stress, there's no parking stress. And it also has a high frequency. So in winter, the, there's a, a coastal tram every 20 minutes. In spring and in autumn, there's a, a coastal tram every 15 minutes. And in summer, every 10 minutes. This type of transport, amazingly, has over 125 years of history. In 1885, La Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer Vicinaux was created. A local tramway company, which was financed by the state, the province and the different municipalities. The tramway exploitation, however, was outsourced to private proprietors. The first tram line at the coast was from Ostend to Middelkerke and was later extended to Newport and Verna. In the beginning, the coastal tram not only transported people, but also goods, for instance, uh, agricultural products, as it also linked uh, several polar villages. The trams were also used to transport building materials. At first, the trams ran on steam, but later were converted to electric. The electric tram ran at a higher speed, but for a long time, the two systems operated alongside each other. And, uh, the steam tram was actually called the peasant tram and the uh, electric tram was called uh, the tram for the rich tourists. In 1895 the state started to work with an English product developer to create an electrical tramway running from Ostend to West End. This was the beginnings of the coastal tram we are familiar with today. Whereas before the trams would connect the different polder villages, the tram would now ride closer to the beach along the dunes. We are also studying the possibility of extending the tram line from Coxeda to Hörne. And apart from that, we are also uh, studying uh, the, possibi the possibility of renewing the trams. Volgende halte: de Panne Esplanade. Near the end of the tram line is a small hangar which houses a museum showcasing coastal trams. The organisation, TTO Nordsee, restores and maintains historic trams. 
They all has been restored by people of our association. During the holidays, we have an exhibition here. And it's open every Saturday and Sunday. And this tram will go onto the streets from here to Adinkerke. And there are different trams. This one is a very old one. Yeah. From the, the 1900s, 1902, 1903. And it's also a typical coastal tram, just like this one. Only on the coast you have such a model. This tram with the two wagons here form an entity. It's the OB type. OB means Ostend Blackenburg. Because in 1900 and some, the tramway was constructed between Ostend and Blankenburg. And that was the type of trams conceived for this line. They were on the road until 1956. What we see here is what we call a baladeuse. That's a French name. A balade means walk. It's just a, a car to sit in the summer. It is open, so you need good weather. First you had the, uh, the steep trams, these were the, the first trams. Then here on the coast, the first electrical trams were in Ostend and these were battery trams. So you, you, did, you didn't need an overhead cable. But uh, these batteries at that time had not a big capacity. So at that time they transformed these trams as normal trams with an overhead. And from that time, on the coast, the most of the trams used were electrical trams. King Leopold II it was a, a king with uh, big ideas. Just, uh, he gave Belgium his big colony, Congo. But also, he liked to transform cities. Yeah. This was in 1900, uh, all the big cities were transformed. And he liked Ostend, because this was on the sea, he liked to go on holiday. Well, on Ostend, we had our first tram line. And so, there was a tram trailer built for Leopold II. And he came by train, to the station of Ostend, and in the station of Ostend, you had a tram waiting for him, with a trailer specially for him and the family, and they brought them to the king's house in Ostend. During the war, trams were used to transport soldiers and ammunition to the front line. A special model was devised that stopped steam emitting from the top, making the tram less visible to the enemy. For a lot of people, it was, it was the only mode of transport. Eh? The, the most of the people didn't have a car. Eh? Some trams had first class seats and second class seats, so the first class was more, more expensive. But normally, uh, taking the tram was not so expensive. The tram made the coast. You see it uh, a very big impact on economical life here on the coast. Because along this tram line came new villages and cities, new houses, new buildings, new stops from the tram. 
So it, it really boosted the economy of the coast, the tram line.